Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking all about the Corydoras catfish, all about how to care for these guys and how to breed them. Make sure you stay around to the end of the video to get all of the information without any further ado. Let's get started. So with Corydoras, these guys come from South America in the Amazon and all the different basins and tributaries and rivers and stuff like that. There are hundreds of these guys. Some are very, very rare and some are very, very common. The most common types of Corydoras you're gonna see are your albinos and these guys also come as bronze corys they're the exact same, they just look different. Your panda koi's are super, super common as well. Sturbays are really common. Even similars and stuff like that are very, very common as well. So those are the ones that are very easy to take care of and should be recommended for beginners. If you guys are after a list of the best koi's for beginners, it's gonna be a link up in the top right hand corner. These guys are a peaceful small catfish that gets to about three inches in size. So they stay down the bottom of the tank. And what they'll do is you'll see them all day. We're sifting through the substrate and looking for little pieces of food and worms and stuff like that to eat like they would in the wild. They're a bottom dweller. You might every now and then see them come spurting up to the top and take a big gulp of air. Other than that, these guys are gonna stay down the bottom of the tank and uh, just look for food all day. So that brings me on to the tank conditions. What I would recommend is because these guys are a schooling fish, you're gonna need to have them in some kind of school because in the wild, these guys, I mean, they're caught in thousands. Heaps of people who have gone wild collecting and I've watched videos and heard stories about people seeing literally thousands of these guys down the bottom of a river. So they are a schooling fish and they will need tank companions like other corridors around them. You're not gonna to wanna to mix in like one panda with one albino with one stobay. You're gonna to wanna to have like six of each type. So what I'd recommend doing is getting about six to eight and putting them in a 20 gallon tank. So like six albinos or six stobays or whatever. And what you're gonna want is some kind of substrate for them to sift through. So it's not essential, but it's definitely recommended. And that substrate, it should be like some sand or some fine gravel. I would definitely stay away from keeping really sharp substrates because it can hurt their barbels. And the other important thing is to have some kind of hiding places because there are some quarries that are just super, super shy. My pandas in particular can be very shy and when I come to the front of the tank they just disappear. My gold lasers are very very shy. I hardly ever see them. It's just something to be aware of. So what I love to do is put some like big java moss or a bunch of like big wisteria plants or Amazon sword plants for them to go in and hide underneath. Now as for the water conditions, because these guys are from the Amazon they prefer that softer water. They can go all the way down to like a pH of like 5 but I'd recommend to keep them at about 5.5 to 7. Some of your common types like your Aeneas which are your albinos and bronze can go up to like a 7.5 but I definitely recommend to keep them at about that seven. And as for temperature, you'll notice that in my fish room, I keep all my quarries on the bottom layer of all these tanks. And that's because they don't like it very, very hot. They do need a heat up, but they don't like it like crazy hot like plecos do. For temperature for these guys, you're gonna want about 72 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 to 27 degrees Celsius. And they'll really, really thank you for that. And yeah, just not that crazy, crazy hot temperature. Now as for diet, because these guys, obviously since they go down the bottom of the aquarium, they do love worms. <laughs> Mine absolutely love worms. So you can do grindle worms, white worms, which I culture both of these, or black worms, which you can just buy from most of your local fish stores. If you can't get these worms live, you can also get frozen blood worms, which work okay, but I found that they can bloat some fish, so it's just to be used um, with caution. Yeah, it's just something to keep in mind, but other than that, other things that are really good is some flakes that get to the bottom of the aquarium, or some granules work really well. You gotta be careful with these guys, because since they're at the bottom of the aquarium, you gotta make sure they're actually getting food, because the other fish up the top of the aquarium can sometimes eat all the food before it gets to the bottom. So other different types of foods you can get are specialty quarry pellets, which I absolutely love to use because they are like sign for quarries you can see here. So these guys will go and they'll sink right to the bottom of the aquarium straight away and then the quarries will nibble on them. They absolutely love that stuff. Now that's basically it for the care of these guys. They're a very easy fish to take care of and keep in most community aquariums and can be super fun to keep because they are just like a cute little catfish. Let's talk about the breeding because I'm passionate about breeding fish. I absolutely love it and I do heaps of breeding in this fish room. A lot of people are going to say that quarries are super easy to breed and yes, that's true. They can be easy to breed, but they are difficult to raise as fry. That's the challenge. So how do you breed these guys? Well, every koi is gonna be a little bit different, but in essence, the way that you breed them is you prep them, heaps of protein to get the eggs inside of the females, like to get the females really plump, feed them up heaps of live food, which works really, really well. So if you want any koi to spawn, feed them live black worms or live any worms, like not just from your garden, but like do your research, like grindles or white worms, fatten these guys up and then do a big cold water change and they should spawn. Now that works for your Anais, like your albinos and stuff like that, even your pandas. Not every koi is gonna work like this. Every koi is a little bit different. So do some research on how to trigger them. And part of triggering as well is finding what they're gonna spawn on. So for instance, my Anais will spawn on the glass of the aquarium and then my pandas will spawn on like a spawning mop or in the Java moss or something like that. So you gotta be aware of that when you're triggering them. So what you're gonna have is all these eggs and you're gonna wanna take them out of 
the aquarium. You can use like a credit card to scrape them off the glass or you can use like your fingers to roll them off the glass or take them out of the spawning mop or whatever. And you're gonna wanna hatch them in moving water. So that's really essential with some oxygen in it. So like an air pump or something like that. And then once they hatch, they are so tiny. You're gonna need to feed them a really small food. And the best food is baby brine shrimp. Once they get to that one centimeter mark, once they get to that size, they need to eat so much food to grow and develop. And that's where it can become a challenge because most of the time they have a hard time transitioning onto pelleted foods and flakes and stuff like that. You're gonna need some kind of live food culture to have a lot of success. Like yes, you will get away with feeding some granules, but if you want really, really good success, you're gonna need some kind of grindle worm culture or something like that where you can constantly feed these guys live food. And that's basically it. These guys aren't an easy fish to breed in my opinion, and they're not great for everyone, but the albinos and your bronze and your pandas can be relatively easy. Besides that, these guys are an awesome community fish, like I said, and something that's definitely recommended for beginners. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.